Hey, Flashpoint Army, are you looking for truth and news all in the spirit of faith? Well, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay connected. Not a part of the Flashpoint Army? Sign up for the latest email updates at govictory.com slash FP sign up and join us as we stand for truth and freedom. You're ba finally back in the studio from your whirlwind tour. Yes, I am, Gene. It's, I came back because I didn't want to miss you tonight. Wow. I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah, you guys, can you guys edit that out and make sure we play yes. it? Make that my ringtone whenever Lance calls. Uh, <laughs> it's good to have you back. And Pastor Hank's been on vacation. You're like, what, what beach yeah. were you at there for a couple of weeks? Well, no, actually, I was uh, actually in Italy uh, roaming about. Yes. No, I was actually right here in the United States surfing on the net. Yes, That's and so we're, we're glad to have you back. And <laughs> The dad uh, jokes are back, Pastor Gene. Yes, I noticed. And, and I like dad jokes, but it's all about the timing. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about what's been going on. Uh, I want to show you this from the IDF. As we know, in all seriousness, uh, what's going on in Israel, uh, it's not going away anytime real soon. Look at this the IDF post this. The IDF and the ISA just conducted an aerial strike on a Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorist compound in the Al Ansar Mosque in Jenin. Recent IDF intel revealed the mosque was used as a command center to plan and execute terrorist attacks. Now, I don't know, uh, Lance, if you can see that. Put that back up, guys. If you can see the uh, there to the right, there is um, the X ray or. Um, the version where you can see actually into the elaborate tunnel system uh, that's going on there, and that this is this is what they do, Lance. I wanted you to speak to this. They they bit these mosques. Either they put them in uh, missiles in hospitals, or they put them under a mosque. There was an elaborate elaborate setup there that was bombed, uh, and this is what uh, the Israelis are dealing with. The one hostage gene that they so far have given up, like some, it's, it's irony of ironies, like some 78-year-old uh, activist who actually was a leftist working sympathetically with Palestinians. Uh, they, they took her hostage and her husband. Her husband's not been released yet, but she was uh, released. And she said she went into a maze of underground tunnels. So it's not just one tunnel, you know, like trying to tunnel out of prison or something like that. It's, it's an absolute uh, total infrastructure. And by the way, this is what happens with your American money. Trump stopped sending the Palestinians millions of dollars. Biden opened it up. The U.N. opened it up. And so you have hundreds of millions of dollars going into, not into schools and infrastructure and sewage systems and hospitals, but into missiles and underground tunneling. That's why they have to be taken out. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, let me give you, uh, Rick, a chance to comment on that. The tunnel system, and I think uh, what Lance says is so accurate. We, we have this idea that uh, there's this dusty, things are falling apart, it's not really stable, and they're you know having to hunch over to get through these tunnels. That's not the case from what we're seeing at all. It's a very sophisticated system. Yeah, and Lance is absolutely right, man. It's been it's been billions of dollars, not just from us, but other other countries all over the world, uh, giving that money. And we've said this on the show. I, I hate being repetitive sometimes, but repetition is the mother of all learning, and we need to be reminded right now when when they're trying to confuse things and make it look like a moral equivalence, or even when Joe Biden tries to uh, make the Ukraine Russia thing uh, somehow equal to the Israel Hamas situation. Uh, it, it, it's so important for us to remember uh, what has happened here and just how not equivalent this is and how evil these people actually are. Um, and even when the money went there, Donald Trump came in with the moral clarity that is missing right now. He immediately said, why are we giving? Again, repetitive. We've said it on the program before, but remember what he said. Why are we giving hundreds of millions of dollars so that they can kill Jews with our money? He saw that immediately and he stopped it, just like Lance said. He stopped sending the money. Of course, Joe Biden's done it on steroids and even now wants to send them more money, even in the face of, of this evil. So I just think it's important to remember moral clarity is what we need in our leadership. And it's certainly missing right now. Let me go to you, Russell, uh, on this, Pastor Russell Johnson. You, you, moral clarity is what Rick is saying. You agree with that? We have a lack of moral clarity in the White House? Well, I think when the church loses her voice, the world loses her mind. And... You know, we've seen a concentrated effort working overtime to try to silence the church, and in doing so, 
it's led to some of the moments that we find ourselves in today. It's almost like giving $6 billion to the largest state sponsor of terror in the world is not a good idea. I mean, the UN is so utterly useless that its abolition is an idea whose time has come. And it's uh, good that America historically has been a strong ally of Israel. And I think we reject that position at our own peril. Um, because Israel remains not just our greatest ally, but I think the way that we handle the Israeli conflict is a test of the theology of the church. And I have never been more opposed to intellectually bankrupt replacement theology than I am today. Uh, and I think um, it's super important for folks, even in my generation, to be reintroduced into a strong theological position that sees the importance and the uniqueness of the role that Israel plays in our eschatological future. And so praying, obviously, for wisdom for uh, the leaders uh, in that part of the world, but believing that this is going to be a strategic time for Israel to leverage its military and in doing so ensure its posterity. Well, let me ask you this, Russell, since you brought it up uh, about your generation before we go, I'm going to show you this John Kirby clip. But before I do, uh, what about you? You know, you mentioned your generation. Where has this fallen apart? Is it that the previous generation didn't do a good job training your generation? Have we fallen down? Where has been the disconnect? I think that there's just been, uh, it's, it's both and. I mean, I think to some degree, it's a lack of curiosity for people in my generation to explore eschatological topics where that was more of a focus in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the late great planet Earth and the Jesus people movement and this idea that Christ could return at any time. And that is not so much, you know, the theological focus amongst people in my age bracket. But what that has led to is kind of like this nonchalant, you know, say la vie eschatology of like, well, it is what it is and it doesn't really matter. And there's nothing really we can ever do about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, kind of who cares? It's it's almost like this eschatology of, of fatalism. And so I think part of it is that, you know, we haven't really been properly taught. I think part of it is that some of the key voices that communicated about the importance of the Middle East and the importance of Israel were last generation. And we don't have as many of those voices amongst my generation. But, you know, what I found is that, um, you know, when you love God, you will love the things that God loves. And for me, visiting Israel several years ago for the very first time was a very transformational experience. Because when you get to the Holy Land and you see the places where Christ walked and the stories of Scripture come alive, it gives you a love for the things that God loves. And, and we know for God so loved the world, whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we want people of all stars and stripes to come into the kingdom. In fact, sounds like in just a few weeks we'll be hosting the son of the founder of Hamas at our church who uh, is now today a born again Christian. And so, you know, we want to reach people wherever they're at. But the reality is, is even in our backyard in Seattle, University of Washington, you got all these young people having pro Hamas rallies on campus because there is such bad training and teaching yeah. on the top of Israel today. Let me uh, let me launch that over to you, Pastor Hank. You, you hear what Pastor Russell's saying and quite elegantly. Um, uh, tell me what you think about uh, where not just the, his generation, but our generation. It's been shocking to me how many church people uh, are, you know, out there with their Palestine flag with total disregard to anything Israel or what their upbringing was. What happened? You know, there's it has. Well, there's been an ignorance, really, to, to be honest with you. And we have to also be reminded that it seems like whenever something happens in the earth, you know, especially when Israel's involved, that for whatever reason, Israel becomes the scapegoat, becomes the blame. Now, that's not to say that Israel doesn't have fault and Israel uh, has, you know, not always done everything correct. But the, the key is because God is connected to Israel, they often get the blame for things. And we must keep that in mind. But to... Uh, the, the pastor's point, we have to remember something. David was a young warrior that came in his generation and he came out to a war that was happening and there was a Goliath that was speaking very bold and, and, and continually for 40 days nonstop with great fear that the whole nation was paralyzed. And it was a young man, David, that fought for his God and fought for his country. But here's what David had to do. He had to leave the sheepfold. And I'm telling you, there's a younger generation that's going to have to leave 
the mindset of a lot of these woke churches, these user-friendly uh, churches, these pastors that won't speak out and do things if they're really going to stand for God in their country. And the other thing that happened is when he did finally go out, he got blamed by his elder brother, the spirit of the elder brother on the church, where he told uh, David, Eliab, you go back to the sheepfold. It's all about the sheep. Don't get involved in politics. And that's really the spirit that has been among many uh, today. But I believe this. There's a young generation rising as well as an older generation of the Joshua Caleb spirit that is not only going to fight for Israel, but fight with God and see this earth have a global reset and a reversal that God can bring a great awakening to give Jesus the harvest that he deserves. Amen. Boy, I'm all for that. I know you are too. All right. Let me, uh, let me move along here because I got so much stuff to get to and we have Victor Marks coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, the, speaking of hostages, we talked about them earlier. I want to show you this clip from John Kirby where he was referring to the remaining hostages. Watch. We talk a lot about the hostages. There are several hundred uh, American citizens that are currently in Gaza. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To the point made by Sammy there, what is the disconnect right now? When will they be allowed out? I wish I could tell you, uh, date certain, time certain. We want to get them out. We want to make sure that they have safe pa passage out. And we are working very, very hard, both with the Israelis and with the Egyptians, to get to that outcome. Right now, of course, you've seen some humanitarian assistance flow in, but we have not forgotten the plight uh, of those hundreds of Americans that are on the other side of that Rafa crossing. We know they want to get home or get out, and we want to help them get out, and we are working on that very, very hard. You've been working on that very, very hard for several days now. They have oftentimes gotten messages yeah. about specific when windows when they could leave that fell apart. Is there any sense that working will end up with an outcome soon? Uh, that, that's what we're working towards, Phil. I, I wish I could tell you for sure, but, but this is hard stuff. It's hard stuff. All right, let's go over to, uh, uh, let me show you this, where he talks about the hostages being released. Watch. CNN has learned that the U.S. has intelligence right now that Iranian-backed militia groups are planning to further ramp up attacks against American forces in the Middle East. What is the Biden administration prepared to do to combat this? Well, without speaking to a specific intelligence, this is something we've been watching very, very closely. In fact, uh, today we were uh, very clear uh, publicly that uh, we know Iran's back in these groups. Uh, we know that they're giving them the means, the resources, the training, uh, uh, the encouragement uh, and direct contacts with the IRGC, the Quds forces at world, the uh, Revolutionary Guard, uh, to conduct these attacks on, on our troops. We will do what we have to do to protect our forces and our facilities in the region. That will continue. Uh, and we've sent a strong Strong signal to Iran through the additional military capabilities that, uh, that we're putting in the region that we have national security interests writ large across that region and we're going to protect and defend them as well. So is a U.S. war against Iran possible? I think what we want to see more than anything, Wolf, is no widening of this conflict, no deepening of it. And we continue to send a strong message uh, to actors in the region, including Iran. Uh, that if you're thinking about jumping in here, you're thinking about deepening and widening and escalating, uh, don't do it. We, we will take our national security interests very, very seriously in the region. Uh, and we've added to the military capabilities uh, to make sure that we can do that. We don't want any widening. Boy, if, if that was what kind of turn, Rick, I mean, that was about as milk toast of a response as you can get. I wouldn't even say that qualifies as politically uh, diplomatic. I mean, we don't want to, you know, are you, is it just me or whenever I see John Kirby, I feel like he's lying. Uh, Gene, <laughs> y y listen, they're teaching a master class. The problem is the master class is on how to leave Americans behind and how to increase conflict around the world by showing weakness. Uh, you know, and, and every bit of this goes back to what Russell said earlier, when the church loses its voice, the nation loses its mind or the world loses its mind. And Russell, I love that. I'm, I'm going to give you credit for it one time. That's it. From now on, I'm stealing it. I mean, that is he's exactly right. And even the University of Washington and every other university across the country, the answer to your previous question about where we went wrong, why these kids are, are you know, standing for Palestine instead of for Israel, it's the universities. That's where it was taught for the last two generations. And we lost those two generations on this issue because of the poison at the universities being taught to them. And the other thing is we have this mindset that trying is all, the, all that's necessary. That's what you just heard from Kirby. We should get credit just for trying. I mean, we gave Barack Obama the Nobel Prize before he even did anything at all. Yeah, that's, that's the true. mindset whenever the church and the salt is not in the culture and bringing out the best flavor in the meat, we get trying instead of actual results.
Uh, that's well said. All right. Uh, I'm going to give this to Lance. Uh, this is Newsmax. Um, exactly what he said would happen. Attacks on American troops. Watch. Hey everyone, something you did not hear President Biden mentioned in his primetime speech last night is that U.S. troops have been attacked in Iraq, Syria in recent days. U.S. officials did disclose this yesterday, but people on social media are aware posts like this calling out the fact here. U.S. troops have been attacked in Iraq and Syria over seven times in the last 48 hours, and the president of the United States just made absolutely zero mention of the attacks or a response in his address to the nation. All right, so Lance, why would he not make any statement. I mean, can you think of any good reason why he wouldn't admit to this? Why does he never said when he goes to Israel and he looks at everything, how come he never talks about Iran in his speech? Uh, is there any good reason that we're missing here? <clears throat> I think it's an answer to prayer, Gene. I, I know what you're getting at. <clears throat> he is not Trump. America isn't under the blessing of leadership right now that's competent. When uh, the last time we had a kerfuffle with Iran... Trump had 56 jets on the decks of uh, some aircraft carriers, each one representing a hostage under Jimmy Carter, each one with instructions to bomb a strategic target and take out the refineries and cripple the economy of Iran. They looked at Trump and they said, eh, let's not go there. They look at Biden. They're shooting missiles at our aircraft carriers. Houthi rebels are doing it. Qatar is doing it. Uh, we're getting attacked on our embassy in Iraq and in Syria, and they're pushing it. I'm glad that Biden and these guys are not widening the theater of conflict to say, we're going to take on Iran because we don't want this becoming World War III. You know how World War I happened? Unintended alliances and consequences. Nobody wanted to go into the war. They walked into it because of connections and relationships. This has to be contained. Until we have leadership that is such that God can give us military victory, Biden is not that leader. Well, no. I mean, he's still spending. Can you imagine Ronald Reagan, if this was going on, going to the beach house two weekends in a row? Uh, I, don't, I don't think no, we'd no, no, see No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Forget, forget that. How about we're funding Egypt? Oh, yeah. We're funding course. Jordan. We're funding Palestinians in Gaza. We're, we're even giving six billion to Iran. We have money all over the table. The president flies down there and says, hey, do you think we can have coffee and maybe talk about this? Forget about the beach scene. The fact he's walking the beach is because the president of Egypt doesn't want to meet with him. And the leadership in Jordan uh, decides that they got to go train their Falcons that day. When you have that level of disrespect for an American leader with his SETCOM meeting there, that's his whole central command post ready to meet. They're saying they don't respect the United States. You would never tell Trump you don't have time for coffee while he's in the neighborhood. This is the whole world knows America is a laughing stock. That's why it's a dangerous time. We have to pray for this not to accelerate, but for it to get clamped down and, and contain it with Hamas. I think Hezbollah is even being careful about how far they go. Let me go to you, Pastor Hank. You hear what Lance is saying? It's an interesting viewpoint. You agree with that? Well, yeah, I agree with having strong leadership. You know, I was thinking about the scripture in the book of Judges. I think it's 24, 25, where it says that where there was no king uh, in Israel, the people did what was right in their own eyes. And when there's no strong leader in a nation, then there are going to be enemies that will rise up and test and see how much they can get by with. So at this time, what we need to do to Lance's point so that we don't see things escalate to a place that is beyond where we need to be or preempt something that the enemy would love to see happen in the earth. We, the people of God, the remnant must come and we must enter into a place of heavy spiritual warfare. We cannot forget that this also is a spiritual battle and we have an authority on the earth. The Bible says when two or more of us agree as touching any one thing upon the earth, it's given to us by our Father in heaven. It also says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. What? can be done if we the people will quit bickering and fighting against each other and begin to unify and say, God, there is godlessness that we are seeing and it's coming from leaders, it's coming from people, it's coming from our country, but we stand in your face, God, and we are asking for your hand of restraint and we're asking for your mercy to come over the nations of the earth. I think we're gonna continue to see the hand of God intervene in a great way if we will continue to do so. And we will also see the Lord intervene where he needs to 
intervene, bringing great restraint and not allowing the enemy to preempt something at this time. Let me, uh, Russell, let me show you this. Uh, Non-emergency non personnel have been ordered to evacuate U.S. Embassy in Iraq. This is the seventh, seventh embassy evacuation of the Biden presidency after Afghanistan, Ukraine, Belarus, Sudan, Haiti, and Niger updated to reflect the ordered departure of non-emergency U.S. government personnel um, from U.S. Embassy Baghdad. Uh, Russell, what, do you, what does this say? Do you, I mean, you've heard what Lance and... Um, Pastor Hanker saying, I mean, the weakness in our leadership is seems to be pervasive in every theater of the world government. Yeah, you know, it, w when America catches a cold, whether it's economically, militaristically, <laughs> socially, politically, you know, the, the nations catch pneumonia. And when America is weak, it sends a signal to the enemies of America and her allies that the nations that we are in relationship with are free for the taking. And there is a reason why we saw Russian aggression under the Biden administration. There's the reason why we saw Iranian and Palestinian aggression under the, the Biden administration is because they know that whatever line he may draw or may communicate that he's drawing, uh, they don't intend to back up or to uh, support. And, you know, the current uh, U.S. administration, they're funding both sides of the conflict. You know, we're talking about sending $100 billion and splitting it between Ukraine and Israel, and then we're turning around and sending billions to the enemies of Israel. I mean, we have not had this level of incompetent foreign policy since the Carter administration and the Iranian hostage crisis. And you had a similar vacuum of weak leadership that essentially allowed the enemies of America to think that they could run rough shot and in doing so uh, not not release the hostages and Carter gave way to a Reagan who came in and said we're not playing games and in fact you will do exactly what we tell you to do and so uh, there is something to be said about a, a strong uh, leader and an indiv individual who other people take serious like he just might actually follow through on his threats we shouldn't mess with him because you know we're not willing to deal with the consequences and i think it's just a sad position for america to be in because we represent a beacon of hope for the world around us and when nations are in trouble they call on America to help, and it is sad to be in a position now where uh, it feels like our enemies know that we're weak, are taking advantage of our weak position, and in doing so are, are laughing in our face. All right, Rick, let me show you this. Multiple attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq, Syria, and near Yemen by IRGC terrorists. Zero U.S. response to date. This is why Khomeini escalates. Um, and it refers to another attack on U.S. troops in Syria. Uh, Rick, when we see this, uh, you heard what uh, Russell said there. I mean, what is going to change? Is there anything going to change or have we just got to hold, hold on until barring a God doing something? Of course, we have that hope God's going to do something in a big way. And I believe he is. However... Unli until that happens, what are we to do, Rick? Well, you know, Russell just did us a favor. He, he allowed us to, to step back and look in the context of history. It's very easy to get depressed in the moment, right? If you only look in the moment, you only look at the circumstances of what's going on, and you think this has never happened to anybody before. And, you know, King Solomon told us there's nothing new under the sun, and Russell just showed us, hey, this just happened to us 43 years ago, almost the exact same situation, very, very similar to what we're dealing with right now. And Jimmy Carter had us in, a, in what he, even he called an economic malaise. In fact, he told us that America's best days were behind us, that we just needed to get used to the new normal. How many Maybe times have we heard that over the last few years. And then, of course, the weakness around the world. And it was something like November of 79 when they took the hostages, Iran, right. and uh, and not until the day that Ronald Reagan was sworn in in 1981 that they were released, more than a year. So I, I wish I could say to you, Gene, no, this will all turn around tomorrow if the right speaker is chosen and the House Republicans stand up and say the right thing. But that's probably not the case. We're, we're probably looking at some tough days. And, and unfortunately, there's a price to pay for 
the mistakes that we've made as a nation. There, there, there's, you know, you pour poison in, there's going to be bad results. There's consequences for our actions. Turning from God for the last 50 years has consequences. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't come back, just like Ronald Reagan brought us back and brought us back after it took several years, brought us back economically to the greatest peacetime economic expansion in history, brought us back to be, once again, the, the sole superpower on the planet, uh, defeated communism and, and, and the Soviet Union. I mean, all of the positive things that happened, it all came back to leadership with godly right. principles. It's, it, that sounds simple, but it is actually that simple. We need leaders with moral clarity and godly principles, and we can turn this thing around. It's going to take time, and we need to be ready for the tough days that are ahead. Wow, so true. All right, uh, Lance, before we go to break, give you final comment on this topic. Well, and, and you know, I wonder, Gene, to what degree uh, we could uh, speculate that the reason why the America military is exercising such, such strong restraint is they're trying to assess how many of the 62,000 of the 2 million that got in, 62,000 persons of interest, which are terror-related people that are in America and around America, how many of them are waiting for American hostilities to become more orchestrated with Iran so that they could do disruptive damage in the United States? We should be praying vigorously for what has come through our own border because we are so linked to Israel. Wouldn't it be something ironic and almost believable that they suffered an intelligence failure and that we suffered an intelligence failure because their border wasn't as secure as they thought. Doesn't take a lot of imagination to see that we probably have sleeper cell, militant cells in the United States waiting for the signal to shock America. Wow. But we're going to pray against that and stand and be alert and vigilant. Blackpoint Live closes out 2023 in Pasadena, California. Join host Gene Bailey, Hey Kuneman, Dutch Sheets, Rick Green, John Amatuku, Abby Johnson, Charlie Kirk, Eric Metaxas, and Mike Lindell for this two-night power pack closeout to the Truth and Freedom Tour. Thursday and Friday, November 30th and December 1st at Harvest Rock Church. Make plans to join us. Register today.